What's good, y'all? Today we're going to be discussing who makes it on the Mount Rushmore of the Los Angeles Lakers franchise. Move like Will Chamberlain, I'm the GOAT. This the Seven More Podcast Show. Yeah. Alright, so before we get into this video, I just want to preface it by saying that Mount Rushmore is not the four greatest Lakers of all time. It's about honoring what the players did and what they meant to the franchise, not just how talented they were. For the first one of this Mount Rushmore, we're going to go with the surefire slam dunk, Laker legend, arguably Laker GOAT. We're going to go with Kobe Bryant, and we all know what he's about. This man, arguably, as far as I'm concerned, has the greatest work ethic in the history of mankind. And that man was dead set to be like Mike Jordan. We all know, we all know what being like Mike is about. Jordan came to the league as a slasher, ain't nobody more athletic, nobody gonna stop him from getting to that paint. What Kobe tried to do, win dunk contest his rookie year, and then he balled out with Shaq, where he either gonna give you a lane to lane, or dunk on your head and wait to a, en route to a 3 p You know what we see Kobe Ryan do? We saw Michael Jordan average the most points per game by anybody not named Will Chamberlain after 37. Kobe said, let me do my best rendition of that. He wasn't quite Mike, not quite as efficient, but that man still averaged 35 a game in 2006. And then when we see Jordan do, we see Jordan say, I gotta win, let me learn how to do this post game. What did Kobe do? Learn how to do that post fadeaway. We all know nobody's stopping Kobe's post fadeaway. He can throw four bodies at that man, just like Mike, that's cash. And then we move into Kobe, showing number 24. He said, let me win back-to-back -back titles for finals MVP, so I can be the best player on a championship team. He said, bump all that Shaq noise, we all know what he's about. Win MVP 2008, so he can be the best player in the league. And let's move into it. Kobe, Kobe getting injured over and over. That man not gonna quit. His will and drive never wavered. And then all that culminated, all that hard work culminated into an epic last game where he dropped 60 on the Utah Jazz's head. And then we all know what he did after the league. We all know he tragically passed. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. But that man's mentality will live on forever, and everybody wants to be just like Kobe now. Next up on the Mount Rushmore, we have inarguably, indisputably, undoubtedly the greatest passer of all time, Irvin Magic Johnson. The man, the myth, the engine that made the Showtime Lakers go. That man is the reason celebrities pull up to Lakers game. He put them on the map. He put the fans in the stands. He put the Lakers as a national icon for everybody to want to go to because of his razzle-dazzle, flashy passes left and right. And not only could he draw oohs and ahs, but that man drew W's as well. Because before Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came there, he was a Pantheon all-time great winning MVPs, but he was not getting the job done in the W category for the Los Angeles Lakers. He had to wait in Elite Garden. He got it in Magic Johnson. When Magic Johnson, as a rookie, was able to step up after Kendall Jabbar got hurt in his rookie year, and Magic Johnson was able to become the Finals MVP at just 20 years of age. He showed he had championship DNA from an early age, and he continued that championship mentality and showed that DNA night in and night out throughout his entire career, leading to five championships and many W's to come on an all-time great Laker dynasty. Not to mention he drew O's and O's and W's, but that man was also putting up some gaudy numbers as well, as he averaged 11 and a half assists per game for his career, and consistently averaged 12 assists a game while shooting 50% from the field. Now haters gonna say that man couldn't score the ball, but he was a capable, efficient, and consistent scorer night in and night out, and if you needed a clutch shot, you know who to go to, Magic Johnson, can get it to Crandall's bar for the sky hook, but hey, if you want Magic to take that shot, that man has ice in his veins as well as he's shown in the final that he can hit clutch shots as well and score when it matters most. Magic Johnson belongs on this list. There's no questions about it. Third member of the Lakers Mount Rushmore, we coming in with another softball, the lean, mean scoring machine, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That man's NBA impact is undeniable. Scoring the ball, you can't stop him. That man just as an entire whole of basketball, is, his legacy is just undeniable. And the Lakers so happen to be a very important chapter of his storied career where he won three regular season MVPs and five championships for the Los Angeles Lakers. And even though the very peak of his prime was at Milwaukee where he averaged 35 and 17, that man was still bomb when he came to LA and was still able to be an integral part of every single championship team because no matter how old he got, shoot, if he's 85, years old coming into the NBA. That sky hook is just so unguardable. That man's still gonna be able to give people buckets. That man perfected a perfect move and it showed that throughout his entire career just how perfect the move was and how he was able to get clutch shot after clutch shot. If you, if you get the ball down low, three seconds left on the clock, you double team and it doesn't matter. You gotta be at least seven, eight to be able to guard down a consistent basis. And despite the fact that Magic Johnson was in his prime the most of the time, Magic Johnson would not have been one of those championships without Kendall Jabbar carrying the load, drawing double teams, and opening up opportunities for every one of the other teammates. 
and allowed Magic Johnson to better pick apart other defenses. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar also was able to contribute defensively and rebounding, and the veteran leadership throughout his entire tenure as a Laker just has shown why the Showtime Lakers are such an important part of that franchise, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson have to be on there because of what they did during that dynasty. And for the fourth and final member of the Los Angeles Lakers, Mount Rushmore, I'm finally going to come in some controversy. And yes, I'm going with George Mikan. You heard that right. George Mikan was that dude back then. Ain't nobody was stopping that man. All he had to do was get down to his spot, catch the ball down low. There was no shot clock to worry about back then, so all he had to do was just make sure the other team wasn't scoring the ball, catch that ball down low in his spot, behemoth down low, immovable object. He going to hit his patented hook shot. And they rode George Mikan all the way to five championships in six years where George Mikan championed the first dynasty in NBA history and established himself as the founder of Lakers winning basketball. Now, George Mikan, you might say, oh, Jerry West, Shaquille O'Neal, they better players than that. Like LeBron James, obviously more talented than George Mikan. Ain't nobody going to deny that. Not even George Mikan would do that. But the fact that the Mount Rushmore is about legacy, I'm going by legacy only. I normally go with players. I would judge them by how talented they are like if someone a better player in their prime yes i'm putting them over but mount rushmore is about honoring greatness and legacy and george mikan embodied that back then and not only did he leave a stamp on the lakers he left a stamp on the nba the most influential influential rule change in nba history was the evolution of pace and that was brought about by the shot clock and ain't nobody was trying to deal with george mikan camping in the paint and absolutely dominating the pace of the game. So they had to create a shot clock to be able to deal with that man. It ended up eliminating how effective George Mikan was, and he's never the same player. But before that rule change came, George Mikan was absolutely wrecking the league, and he has to be honored for that. And so for that, I'm going to put George Mikan over Jerry West solely on the fact that that man was able to win championships upon championships. Move like Will Chamberlain, I'm the GOAT. This the Severmore Podcast Show. Yeah.